Recording is started. Let's go. Happy Saturday, everyone. Today is November 13th. November 13th. I have to update this right here. November 13th. Uh, we got a cool guest today. His name is Ryan. So thank you, Ryan, for agreeing to speak with us. Um, we're going to analyze a really interesting uh, mobile home park. So we'll get into that in a little bit. So I wanted to go over our agenda real quick. Uh, we're gonna go over some quick wins and a quick five minute updates. And we're gonna touch on some real estate news. And then we're gonna have our Q and A with Ryan. So the next five, 10 minutes, we're gonna run through real quick so we can jump into the good stuff. Welcome Ryan, you're in a, a reader right now. Where are you at right now, Ryan? Uh, down in Los Angeles, actually. In LA, so wow. You're yeah, buying, you're buying down there too. No, not buying, just living. <laughs> oh, just for fun, okay. <laughs> all right, we'll get more into a uh, Ryan story and all that in a little bit. So, so let's jump into some wins. Anybody has some wins for the week? Anything exciting? Anything cool? Anything uh, you want to share with us? Any wins for the week? We got a big group today. So any wins, any wins, any wins? Is everyone shy today? Okay, no problem, everyone's shy today. Okay, so I'll share a win with you guys. So we're working on this little condo flip, little condo flip. So Margie is helping us fix this whole little condo flip and it's gonna be done by next week, right Margie? Yes, we're done, we're, we're enlisting. Done. Yeah, two, two weeks of construction, one week on um, prepped for list. So we're so good. We're so excited. <laughs> wow, this is a 20-day flip, 20-day flip. Yeah, so we can't wait to show you guys this. Uh, it's going to go in the markets. I'm trying to adjust this thing. It's going to go in the market before Christmas, before Christmas. So before Christmas. Um, let me change this. This is all strange right now. Okay. So it's gonna go on the market before Christmas, 248 Truckee Lane. So you guys wanna see this quick condo flip that's uh, Margie designed and remodeled and Margie did everything. Right, Margie? I am so excited. I'm so <laughs> excited, you guys. I mean, we, me and Tom and the team, um, we do have a lot of projects that you guys can see after, so so yeah. excited. <laughs> yeah, so let me try to pull some photos so you guys can see real quick. Um, a little sneak peek, a sneak peek. Let me pull some photos right here. Oh, I really like this accent wall that you did, Margie. That was amazing. And that only cost how much? It was eighty dollars. Eighty dollars. Yes. Eighty dollars, but it makes a huge difference. I want that in my room. And then we're gonna um, paint it an accent wall color because everything Ooh. is white. Yeah. And then it will. Why we did that is we want to draw the clients because the place is small. We mm. wanted to give them something to look and ooh and ah about. Yeah. Um. So that they they forget how small the place is because it will take them, the ceiling is super high. Yeah. And so it will take their eyes all the way on the top of the ceiling. Yeah, I love that, I love that. Very good touch to that. So very nice, thank you, Margie. That was amazing, 100 bucks, 100 bucks, not bad, 100 bucks. So we're gonna go live next week. So you guys wanna see a condo flip. Um, so we'll share with you the numbers, 515 purchase, and then 40K remodel. So Margie kept it under budgets, ARV about 650, maybe even 700K. It's a, it's a crazy market right now. So very interesting time right now to sell. So that's, that's uh, exciting. So we'll celebrate soon. We'll celebrate soon. Um, so let's go to our needs and wants. If you guys need anything, reach out to me throughout the week. Uh, we can help you get your flip. We can help you with your remodel. Um, we can help design your house. Margie can... Margie can do everything. So just call Margie. <laughs> no, you go to Tom, Tom and Tom, <laughs> Tom, you go to Tom and then to, I have so many flippers, but go to Tom first. Yeah, Margie, 
Marty's our super mom. Just yeah, so feel free to reach out to us and uh, ask for help. Uh, upcoming events, we have an event. Uh, not not me, but our friends are having an event today at Big Al's, twelve to two p.m. Twelve to two p.m. If you guys want to join this live event, they always pull in a good crowd, probably like fifty to hundred people. So feel free to join their uh, meetup today. Big Al's is free, so check it out. And a quick market update, just just less than like five minutes. We're gonna go over this market update. We're gonna see what's happening right now in Santa Clara County. Santa Clara County. So I'm gonna log into my MLS real quick. Santa Clara County. So right last time we checked the market, there's only 686 active single family on the market. Um, before that, there was about 900. So you see every month is dropping like crazy. So there's not many actives at all on the market. It's usually around 800 to 900. Um, during the summertime, there's a lot. But now, how much do you think, uh, how many houses do you think is on the market right now today in, in Santa Clara County? Anyone want to take a guess? Santa Clara County, single family actives right now, single family. The whole Santa Clara County, how many actives? 594. 594 so that's even lower than last time that's crazy right 594 so we're operating at a very low um inventory market let's see how many is affordable 155 uh, which is not many right only 155 houses for the whole santa clara county that's affordable so it's crazy right now i think this is the perfect time if you want to get rid of your property because the people that really want to buy uh -huh. um is going to buy you know i mean people always ready to buy exactly yeah um, yeah people that want to buy this is their only time uh to buy so and the interest rate is still low so that's good so we have a, a thousand sixty three pendings a thousand sixty three pendings so that's really good double the pendings of of uh, actives so it's pretty hot market right now um a thousand sold within the last 30 days 1097 so that means that every month the buyers are buying up all the inventory so double the inventory right so where are these houses coming from um i don't know there's just nothing for sale there's just nothing out there so it is a good time to sell because the market is just hot so speaking of a hot market we're going to check out some real estate news real quick so check out this house that sold for 1.5 million over asking, 1.5 million over asking. And it's not even that nice. It's just a, a house in Berkeley that sold for 4.5 million, 4.5 million. The uh, average price or the market value at the time was only like 3 million, right? So they paid over a million dollars for this house, a million dollars, only four bedroom. That's it, four bedroom, and it sold over 1.5 million. Uh, built in 19, um, 1911, only listed for 10 days, so it's kind of crazy. Bay Area rose 12% 12, 12 since last year. That's just one year, and it rose by 10%. So if you bought a house last year, you're gonna make easily $100,000. So Bay Area is still hot. It's still a good time to buy and flip in the Bay Area. Um, and then I wanted to show you guys this house. This is an ugly house that sold for really high. Check this out, 1,200 square feet. And it went pending over $2 million. Would you buy this for $2 million? Ryan, would you buy this one? Or would you buy a 30-unit apartment building? It's so ugly. Look at that ugly carpet. $2 million <laughs> ugly carpet. Wow. Look at those lights, Marty. $2 million for those ugly lights. I, I can't. Well, if they spent $40,000, they could have probably made 2.5. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> if they fix it up a little bit. It's so ugly. Look at this. This is the lowest tile ever I've seen in the history of tiles. We, we should start doing that to save money. Yeah, that's pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And this sold over $2 million. That's nuts. So Bay Area is just crazy. People are crazy in Bay Area. We got to get out of here. We're going to all move to Reno, just like Ryan. 
Okay, so that's a, that's a crazy house. Here's another crazy flip for some motivation. Um, so this one sold for 1.8 and they only bought it for, they only bought it for 975. So they made probably at least half a million dollars, half a million dollars on this flip right here. So this is a nice fat flip in San Bruno. So San Bruno is also hitting $2 million. Um, this one at least is nicer than the other one. So $2 million for this flip right here. $2 million. So everything is hitting $2 million now. That's about the, the price for a nice um, fixed up house. So that's a fat flip that we like. So now let's roll into our agenda. So now let's let's uh, let's chat with Ryan. Let's let's learn from Ryan because Bay Area is just too expensive. We can't survive here. We can't even cash flow here. Uh, we can't even make our payments. Uh, it's just crazy here. I can't even afford gas here. Gas is California has the most expensive gas out of all fifty states. It's kind oh of, my gosh, five dollars! I yeah. just put a gas. <laughs> Yeah, five dollars something now. It's it's even hitting like five fifty in some areas. So it's just it's just crazy. It's it's too crazy. Um. So, uh, Ryan, welcome, welcome to our Super Saturday, Ryan. I'm glad you made it. I'm glad you can join us and share your uh your really cool mobile home park. And so we're gonna learn about Ryan. And here's Ryan's contact information. You want to reach out. Uh, he also has a meetup. So we met Ryan at his meetup. So that's actually how we met a couple months ago. Um, Ryan was talking about how he purchased $20 million in commercial real estate. So I was very impressed. I was like, man, how are these guys doing it? Because I can barely buy one house in the Bay Area. So I don't, I don't know how they bought $20 million in Reno and uh, Vegas and all over. So very impressive, 25 years old. Uh, are you even 26 yet, Ryan? No, I, I just turned 25, actually. You just turned 25, ago. so you did all this when you're 23, 24? <laughs> young blood, young oh. blood. <laughs> Man, there's, some, there's some advantages to that, you know, it, it helps sometimes. <laughs> amazing, very cool, very cool. So now, uh, yeah, so let's jump into it. So uh, tell us about yourself and uh, how you got started in real estate, just so everyone can get a background and all that. Yeah, awesome. Thanks for the intro, Tom. Um, so as Tom said, we, we met at a real estate meetup, um, a few months ago, uh, I guess my journey into real estate started maybe, what is it called? Let's call it three years ago now, uh, with a partner of mine and I buying some triplexes and quadplexes out in Cincinnati, Ohio, just out of state, kind of taking, taking all the money we were making at our W2 tech jobs and then funneling it into real estate and you would buy and then kind of, you know, hold and save up for the next one and then buy and every nine months, maybe every year you get, you, know, you get one property. Um, and it ended up just being, you know, progressing towards the goal we wanted, but moving a little slower than we wanted it to be. And so we tried to try to accelerate that and kind of just, you know, spun our wheels for about a year or so until we, uh, until honestly the pandemic started and we had this, like, we were just like flush with time now that we weren't commuting in the Bay area. So all of you are from the Bay area, right? So, you know, <laughs> how much time goes it, how much time sink it is to commute. And I was living in San Francisco commuting down to, um, the South Bay where I was working at, at Google. And so um, getting all that time back and we just put it all into real estate. And so we moved out to, um, eventually ended up moving out to Reno, Nevada, where we started buying um, small, or like large, start, started buying larger multifamily, um, five plus units, and then eventually went into commercial assets. And so that was, um, and everything from industrial buildings to retail office, uh, now mobile home parks, and kind of, you know, motels and hotels, things like that. So we started buying all different sorts of assets out in Reno. Reno's had an amazing year, which has been a huge, you know, tailwind behind us. Um, so I don't want to forget that. And, uh, but you know, real estate in general has had a, had a great year. So it's, it's been really, you know, the last 18 months or so, we've bought um, about $20 million out in Reno. We're in contract on about another 30 million out in uh, some other locations, some in Reno, some in North Carolina, um, Florida and, and, um, a few other spots. So that's, um, that's our story. And I think, yeah, Tom wanted me to come in here today and, and talk a little bit about this mobile home park deal that we're working on. Um, but I'm also happy to just share about, uh, as I said, we, we kind of span all different asset classes. And so anything that's interesting to the group or could be helpful from a knowledge perspective, um, happy to share. 
Yeah, very cool. So just in the last 18 months, that's it. 18 months, you bought all that. Yeah, and and just to you know to caveat, you know, it's not all with our it's a lot of it's syndicated, so it's not all with our own money. Yeah. So we're raising funds and, and other people are bringing in a lot of that equity. Um, but some of those deals we've already exited. And so we're, they're kind of on the, the end of the deal as opposed to the beginning. And so they're, they're going well for those, those investors. Yeah, very cool. Very cool. So for someone that's new to real estate and uh, um, how would they even get started into syndicating or uh, getting into commercials? It's, 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 it's all out of state. So how do, you, how do you manage all that? Do you have to move there? Do you have a team or how do you do all that? Yeah, I think the beauty about um, commercial real estate is it's actually a lot easier to manage than single family home rentals or an apartment building or something like that. So um, when I look at, you know, if we call commercial real estate, industrial, retail, office, those types of things, mm -hmm. the type of tenant you're getting is not, you know, um, a you know single family home renter or an apartment renter, you're getting a business. And so the uh, tenant is a business and they come in and they will lease the building oftentimes on a three year or a five year or a 10 year lease. Yeah. Um, those leases are often also what's called triple net, um, where the tenant will take on all the expenses. So they'll maintain the building. They'll pay the property tax. They'll pay the insurance. Um, they will pay the utilities. And you are, you know, it's as close as it gets actually to real like mailbox money, the way people kind of want real estate to be. Yeah. So there's a lot of benefits to commercial real estate in terms of the passivity of it. So when it comes to managing, like we don't worry about managing, you know, our industrial building out in North Carolina, we'll fly out there once and look at it when we were in escrow mm -hmm. and then place a tenant on a 10 year lease. And you kind of just forget about it. <laughs> so you don't have to worry about repairs and anything because the tenant takes care of all that. The tenant will improve it themselves. They have an, yeah, they have a lease that states, you know, I'm going to return you the building 10 years from now in exactly the same condition it's in right now. So uh, all you have to do is know what condition it's in right now. And then at the end of the lease, you come in and you say, Hey, you need to fix this, this, this. And, um, you know, they, a lot of those leases are either personally guaranteed by the business owner or they're, they're corporately guaranteed by the large business that's backing it. Um, you know, whether it be, could be McDonald's or, you know, whoever, whoever else. So, um, in these companies there, you know, it's a little bit easier to get your, your cash all the time. Nice. Nice. Okay. So that's interesting. Um, so you don't really care about the, the condition too much because, um, the tenant's going to work on it. And so what are you looking at mainly when you're, you're flying there for uh, the first time and looking at it one time? Yeah. You, so you might care about the condition of the building when you're transact, when you're buying, um, yeah. because depending on what lease is in place uh, or what tenant is there, you don't know who's, who's obligated to make those fixes yeah. because you didn't own the building at the onset of the lease at the beginning. Um, yeah. But, you know, if you're signing a new lease with a new tenant, you know exactly what condition the building is in because you own the building. And so you know what they're responsible for. So usually when we're, you know, when we're in escrow on a building uh, in the commercial space, we will get in a physical inspection, the same as like a single family home. Yeah. And all the issues with it, we'll send it to the seller and say, hey, I don't know if this is your obligation or the, or the tenant's obligation to fix, mm -hmm. but we need these fixes to be made. And, you know, if they take it up with the tenant and say, hey, tenant, your lease says you will maintain the building. You didn't maintain the building. You got to fix these things. That's okay with us. Or if the seller says, you know, I'm, you know, that's my fault. I'm responsible for that because my lease is, you know, doesn't say that the tenant's responsible. Then yeah. the seller will fix it instead. So either way, we want to catch it before we close. Um, and then from then on, it's our obligation. You know, our only obligation is to, um, or responsibility is to make sure that the tenant, you know, keeps up with the, the maintenance. Nice, nice. Okay, so that's interesting. So you can push on the seller and then push on the tenant. So it's not yeah. like a single family where you're always responsible. So single mm -hmm. family, you have blame for everything. <laughs> right. <laughs> wow. Yeah, which is a lot of work, right? Uh, to go work. in there and fix it yourself. Exactly, exactly. So I guess, um, so what would be the best deal so far? And then we can jump into the mobile home numbers. So best deal so far, your favorite one, your favorite commercial deal that, you're, that you worked on. Uh, we're working on one right now that will close in about three weeks. That's, um, yeah. So, uh, it's a cold storage warehouse out in Raleigh, North Carolina. Uh -huh. Cold storage. Um, yeah. So it's a, a huge, the company that worked or that is stationed there is called Nova Zymes, a life science company, mm -hmm. um, that's worth a few billion dollars out of yeah. Denmark or based in Denmark. Wow. Um, and they are renting the building to store enzymes, uh, for at a very specific temperature. So there we're purchasing at seven and a half million. Mm -hmm. Um, the rent, they've had the same rent for the last 10 years without rent raises, which is abnormal. That's yeah. strange. 
Um, so they're way behind. Raleigh has been, you know, similar to Reno, similar to the Bay Area, where it's kind of exploded in the last five years or whatnot. And I guess the Bay Area has, you know, been exploding for a lot longer than that. <laughs> but um, uh, Raleigh has been on the up, you know, upward trend for a while. So yeah, they're paying two dollars and fifty eight cents per square foot in rent. Yeah, and um, or yeah, two dollars fifty eight cents per square foot, and um, market rent is probably closer to eight. Market rent is closer to eight. Yeah, so um, we're renegotiating with them as well as some other tenants. And um, we have the building in contract at seven and a half million right now. We actually might have an offer coming in before we close uh, on Monday mm -hmm. at around 20 million. No way. So you already got an offer. You didn't do anything, but you already we have haven't done. <laughs> we haven't done anything yet. Wow. How? So just because the rent can possibly go up to eight, is that why? Exactly. Yeah. So commercial buildings like multifamily, you know, commercial multifamily is uh, the price is a function of the how much rent you can get. You know, mm -hmm. these are a lot of big institutional groups investing for the sake of cash flow and whatnot. Yeah. So the more you can cash flow, the more the higher the yield, you know, the higher the value of the building. So if you can increase the rent by 3x, you can increase the building value by 3x. Wow. So just like that from seven and a half. So I'm curious, why wouldn't the owner sell it for higher or why wouldn't the tenant buy it? Because they have, they're worth billions of dollars, seven million is not much to them. So it's, that's fascinating, right? Yeah, uh, there's two reasons. I mean, a couple of reasons actually. Um, one is uh, we just contacted the seller directly. So uh -huh. it wasn't on market and um, they've built, they, I don't think they own a lot of real estate. They um, built this building back in 1975 and they've owned it since then. I think it's the only thing they own. Oh, um, and they're just, they're not really real estate, you know, moguls or re repeat owners. Yeah. Um, they built it as a project back then and they're looking to exit, you know, they're in their, the guy's in his sixties, his dad's in his eighties. They're looking to just retire off of, you know, off the building. Nice. So um, that's kind of the seller situation, the tenants, uh, you know, I don't think they were in the, they're most companies, yeah. despite having a lot of cash aren't in the game of buying real estate. That's not their, you know, like most people do well in business because they focus on what they're good at. Yeah. And so most of these companies are not focusing on buying real estate. They're focusing on running their business and paying rent. Um, so yeah, they, uh, despite, you know, they don't know always what the seller is willing to sell the building at or yeah. that that would be a good purchase or not, because they're not used to evaluating real estate. That's not right. really what they do on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah. So they never asked the seller. So they missed that opportunity. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So that's amazing. So seven and a half and you're going to sell it for 20 million. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> All right, good luck. I hope you hit 20 million or even 10 million or even 15 million. You still make a million dollars just like that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, very amazing. So what are you gonna do with your million dollar after you sell that? <laughs> I'm not sure, honestly. Uh, actually, I'll reinvest it, use it for cash flow, And then um, I actually am gonna be looking, we actually paused or stopped acquisition this week. Okay. So we are stopping acquisition of new buildings um we'll still do deals but we're not looking for any more yeah. so we're not you know as i said we contacted the seller directly yeah. we are not spending time contacting any more sellers oh. um we're you know we're probably um we're done acquiring at the speed we're acquiring so we're gonna yeah. slow things down and just run more passively okay nice nice so run passively and try to just uh take care of the buildings and and get it yeah. get it streamlined right get, get the whole process streamlined exactly yeah, very nice, very nice. So any more? So no more calling owners, no more wholesaling. Just, just, just take, just uh, take care of what you already have, right? Yeah, we might do some more deals, but we're, you know, if we're, they're brought to us by brokers or contacts yeah. or something like that, we're not going to be out there trading time for looking, you know, for acquisition. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, very smart, very smart. Because you guys already have a lot of buildings. I think you have like five, ten products right now or something. Yeah, we have we have around six. And then we got like eight or nine in escrow. So we're, um, you know, sum it all up. That'll be enough. For wow. us. <laughs> so 15 big projects. That's, that's amazing. That's more, more flips than we have. And that, these are, these are huge projects. These are like 5,000. How big is this, this building again? Like 10,000 square feet? No, it's almost, it's 200,000. <laughs> 200,000 square feet. Yeah. Man, 200,000 square feet. I don't even know how big is that. That's like as big as the city. <laughs> That's huge. Wow, that's cool. We'd we'll love to see it. We'd we'll love to. Uh, um, oh, 
maybe we can post some photos. You have some photos? I want to see what a 200,000 building, square feet building looks like. It's uh, it's not very impressive to be honest. It's a big <laughs> box. <laughs> okay, it's kind of like an uh, Amazon warehouse. It's just like an Amazon warehouse. Exactly. That's the way you can imagine. Yeah. Nice, nice. Okay. Very fascinating. So good job. Good job of putting that deal together. Um, let's jump into your mobile home since uh, that one is a live project and you're you're actually closing in one month, right? You're closing in one month. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So tell us more about this mobile home and, and why do you like it? Um, yeah. Yeah. So uh, let me ask a quick question before I start. Uh, Tom, how familiar is you know, your audience with um, like apartment apartment buildings and like five plus unit multifamily economics? Yeah. I think most of us are single family in the Bay Area. Single family in the Bay Perfect. Area. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure if anyone's in commercial, maybe like a few, less than um, 10%. But okay. Yeah. Cool. That'll help me just know where to start, you know? And um, so mobile home parks, I think, uh, you know, there's a lot, actually a lot of people, you know, get started in real estate and they're, they're in the single family home space. I think, cause there's a lot of familiarity with the single family home. Um, you all, a lot of people grew up in single family homes. They've rented single family homes, owned single family homes. So we understand what it's like to be a tenant and what it's like to be a, um, you know, uh, potentially an owner of, of a single family home. So the economics kind of makes sense. When we move up to, you know, when we look at multifamily, People, you know, almost everybody's been a tenant of a multifamily building at some point. And so there's, you know, a decent understanding of how that dynamic works between the landlord and the tenant as well. Mobile home parks are, um, it's easiest to kind of come from that world of multifamily and then look at a mobile home park and just call out the differences to explain like, what are the key differences between an apartment building and a mobile home park? Um, and the primary, you know, kind of baseline way to understand the value of either of those assets is um, in the commercial world, how much uh, what's called net operating income you can produce is directly proportional to the value of the building. So if I have you know, X dollars in rent um, and I have Y in expenses, then X minus Y is going to you know, very, drive the, the value of the building. So if I increase the expense, or if I increase the rent, it increases the value of the building. If I decrease the expenses, it increases the value of the building or the asset, I should say. Um, so that's true in multifamily. Uh, commercial multifamily. It's also true in mobile home parks. The main difference between multifamily and mobile home parks is that in a mobile home park, there is a separation between the land and the actual building itself that sits on top. So in this mobile home park, we have 30 lots is what it's called. Um, so each lot is a kind of a plot of land within the parcel that can be rented out to a tenant. And so the the uh, building sits on top of that foundation and it can be picked up. So whenever, if you're like, say, driving um, on the freeway and you see, uh, you know, a big truck that says like an oversized load on the back and it's carrying a full house, like I've, I've seen it like once or twice. Um, those a lot of times are mobile homes. So those are homes that they can actually pick up and move from one lot to another and then plop it down on a new lot. And so a mobile home park is a, you know, a set of a certain number of lots that have these homes that are sitting on top of it. And so this mobile home that we're pur purchasing, it has 30 lots and each of those buildings that the actual mobile homes, they can be owned by either the park owner or the, like essentially the landlord, or it can be owned by the tenant. So it can be either, or if you own it as the landlord, then you can rent out the mobile homes. But if the, um, if the tenant owns it, then you don't rent out the home. Um, so you're not collecting rent off the home. And so from an investor's perspective, a lot of people would say like, okay, well, I'd want, to, I'd want to be the landlord that owns the homes because now I can rent out the space, the lot that they're on, and also the home. So I get, you know, extra rent there. Um, and that's actually normally not, you know, intu counterintuitive. That's not the case. As an investor, you typically want to own only the land and not the homes. And so there's a couple of reasons behind that. So one is... Um, the, the, the first being uh, when I own only the land and I'm renting out the land, and that's what, uh, if you look at the current rent line item here on, on Tom's um, sheet, you see 550 per lot per month. That's how much we're the, the lots or the space is currently renting for per tenant. Um, and in our case, 29 of those tenants own their homes. Hmm. So when the tenants own the homes, you know, they're not... Um, they are not paying rent monthly on those homes, but they are paying rent monthly on the lot to us. And so the beauty of tenants owning the homes is now they pay all the, you know, they're paying the utilities on that home. 
They're paying for the maintenance on that home. They're paying the property insurance on that home. So it starts to kind of resemble a commercial asset, like I talked about earlier with, a, say, an industrial building or something like that, where a lot of the expenses move from the landlord to the tenant. And it's not just the expenses, but it's also just the work involved. So it becomes a more passive asset as, you, um, as the tenants own more and more of the homes. So as you, um, you know, sell off the homes to the tenants, uh, the workload on your front becomes uh, less and that actually drives the value of the, the whole asset up. So in this particular case, we have 30 lots, 29 of them have tenants on them and all 29 of those tenants own the homes that they're living in. We have one lot that's vacant and we're gonna fill that lot. And usually the mechanism for filling the lot is you find a tenant, you buy the home and then you sell them the home on a kind of like a seller carry situation where you know they ha have a note to you and they, um, will eventually pay you off uh, for the home. They kind of like, it's like a lease to own. Yeah. So anyway, those are kind of the mechanics of mobile homes. I hope that was straightforward. I'll pause really quick and just in case there's any questions. Otherwise, um, I'll keep moving on. Anyone have any questions on that? On the mobile homes? So you're basically just renting the land. So you don't have to fix the house. You're not responsible for the, the units. You're just responsible for the land. All right. Nice. Okay. So very cool. So you're getting 550 a month. Let's play with some very, very quick numbers, quick numbers just to, and then we'll, we'll run on the Excel. Um, so let's say you're buying it for 3 million. Your loan will be about um, uh, 5k for every million. So your payments around 15,000 a month, roughly, right? Your payments, 15,000 a month payments, uh, super rough numbers. And then you're currently getting 550. So let's just say uh, simple math, 500 times 30 units. Uh, you're getting about 15,000 a month in rent, right? You're getting- We're getting 000. around, yes. Yeah, it's like 16 something yeah. a month in rent right now. Nice. So 16. So that covers, so the current rent covers. So this is the interesting part. So current rent covers um, the loan payment already, just the current rent, not in, including- any increased rent or anything like that. So let's say that you increase the rent by 300 bucks, right? So yeah. rent, so increase um, by 300 times 30 units. How much is that? 30 units, 300 times 30 units is 9,000? 9,000? Yeah. yeah, so this is pure cash flow now because this is after you paid um, because your current rent already covers. So now you get an extra um let's say five to uh ten thousand a month in cash flow right in cash flow exactly so uh, a lot like um multifamily a commercial multifamily the cash flows on mobile home parks are are not always extremely high this one is actually has the opportunity to get pretty high yeah um, but it's not typical of um the mobile home parks so yeah. what that means is you know when you go to sell you'll have increased the value significantly mm -hmm. um, when you go to exit. Yeah. And so, yeah, as you said, we're purchasing at around 3 million if we're bringing the rents up to 850, uh, which in this particular case is, is, is definitely doable in Reno. Yeah. Uh, then the value of the building will go up, you know, north of four and a half million. Wow. So you're, you, so about a million dollars to be made right here and you don't have to do anything to, um, um, fix it up. You don't have to like improve it. You just have to, how do you get the rents up in this case? Um, in this case. So that's actually um, with mobile home parks. One of the things that's like when you have lot rents, no, at first, actually, let me, let me start from the beginning. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, all the leases are month to month. Reno is not on a rent control system, anything like the Bay area. So mm -hmm. actually issuing rent raises is just like a 60 day notice. Um, so you yeah. issue a 60 day notice. We're gonna do it in three steps. So we don't wanna do the jump all at once. It's um, yeah. too steep. So we're gonna do $100 uh, right when we purchase, $100 um, in a year and $100 a year after that. So oh. it'll be a little over two years to do the full raise. Even at that point, we'll be under market rent. Market rent right now is probably about $900 a month. Mm -hmm. um, so there might be a future raise after that if we decide to hold on to the park. Yeah. Um, or we might sell it to the next investor who can you know, have a little bit of, um, rent left to go or a rent raise left to go. Yeah. So um, that's, uh, yeah, that's where we're, 
or what we're looking to do here. Um, the notices are pretty easy. So um, we'll sign them on a 12 month lease with each notice. And then at the next 12 month period, we'll you know, do another raise. Nice. So you're, you're, that's smart. So you're stretching over two, three years. You're not going to scare them away. So if you increase yeah. by 200, they'll probably leave, right? Well, it's, um, I actually think they won't, <laughs> but, um, so mobile homes, the, a lot of the reasons investors really like mobile home parks is mm -hmm. tenant owns the home. They become what like, what's known as like a very sticky tenant. And this is true in the commercial space as well. When a, when a, let's say a tenant in the commercial space comes into it and they, they want to have a bar and so they yeah. put a hundred thousand dollars into the space to make it a bar. Yeah, the odds that they leave are very low. Yeah. And so this is a set, very similar with a mobile home park where if the tenant buys the mobile home mm -hmm. and has sunk several thousand dollars into their, you know, maybe it's five, $10,000 into buying this home. Yeah. Now they're not going to leave very often because you raised the rent a hundred dollars, you know, right. or you, you know, whatever it is. Um, so it makes tenants a lot stickier. They're more likely to stay for 10 years, 15 years, whatever it is. So there's a lot less turnover than there is with apartments. Yeah. So that makes I, it very favorable. One, one of the things too, Ryan, if you, um, if, if you can explain if it's true, but like in Fresno, we do have a quite a bit of more, more um, you know, homes, mobile homes, places. It's, um, it's hard. It's so expensive to actually move the home. You know what I mean? Right. Um, yeah. So for them to just pay extra hundred dollars will be a lot better than spending three, four, sometimes up to seven thousand to just move their home to another part. You know? Yeah, yeah. Moving moving the home is a several thousand dollar endeavor, and in Reno, actually, we've called all the mobile home parks, and there is no vacancy. There's not. I couldn't find a single bit spot in all of Reno. Um, and, and Reno is like that with apartments as well. Like the vacancy rates are about one percent right now, or one and a half percent. So um, there, you know, there's nowhere really to go. Even raising to 650, they're going to be one of the lowest rents in all of Reno. Yeah, that's <laughs> um, right. And the cost is so high to move. I, I really, you know, think um, vacancy is uh, is not a huge call it threat here. Yeah, it's only 100 bucks. That's just like a cell phone bill or a gas bill, right? So they can <laughs> afford it. Um, let's let's pull some photos. I want to I want to show you guys how this mobile home looks, and then we're going to go into a deep dive into the Excel. So you see the numbers and all that. Um, so here is the site. Here's the site right here. It's it's um, nice, nice tucked away, and it's near single family. So it's not like it's in the industrial, uh, ugly area, right? It's actually a decent area. Yeah, the, this is actually the cleanest mobile home park I've I've ever seen. So it backs oh. up into that creek right before. Uh, actually, there's a creek on both sides. Oh, the Steamboat Creek there. Mm -hmm. Um. And uh, yeah, the park in general is extremely clean. They actually, they look almost identical to single family homes. Yeah. For like an untrained eye, you actually wouldn't really be able to tell the difference. Wow. That's interesting. So utilities are all right here. There's public sewer and all that. Since It's, next it's all public. public. Yeah. It's all public utilities. Yeah. Um, the tenants pay everything except for the sewer and the trash. Yeah. Um, and they take on the rest. Nice. Nice. And then we have some photos of, the uh, outside so let's pull up some photos so now let's check this out mobile home park in reno um it just looks like a box on cement foundation exactly <laughs> wow but look at that nice creek you get a nice little view right so that's, <laughs> that's cool so they get yeah so there's water. um the current owner actually is um uh, so she's had this park forever and she's yeah. keeping one of the houses on this mobile home lot um, as a renter. So she's going to rent basically a space from us because um, oh, yeah. she puts her family there, um, you know, whenever, whenever a lot of family is coming into town mm -hmm. and she runs out of space in her own home, she'll put her family up in the mobile home park. Um, so it's, you know, nice enough for her as a you know, her net worth of 35 million or whatever it is uh to you know put our family up into this into the park so it's, it's a pretty high quality um and nicely done park and yeah. we'll end up redoing all the paving for the roads and stuff like that yeah yeah it looks very clean it looks like everyone takes care of their mobile home park it doesn't look like a trailer trash type of area it's super clean right yeah exactly that's cool so good tenant mix good location um good good uh opportunity to increase the rent so all the all the uh, signs are there right next to single family i really like that um so now i have this excel that i like created it's it's kind of um 
It's for a single family, but let's test it out. Let's test it out on commercial. So three million dollars, right? Three million, one, two, three. And yeah. uh, one more zero, one more zero. So three million, 25% down. So you need $750,000, $750,000. Um, yeah. Price per unit, there's 30 units. So basically you're paying 100,000 for a piece of land in a way, 100,000 for a piece of land. And yep. you can rent it out potentially up to 800. So if you just look at one unit, um, 800 divided by 100,000, um, or actually let's look at the annual, the annual. So 800 times 12, how much is that? 800 times 12. 800 times 12 is 9,600, right? 9,600? Yeah, you got yeah. it. So let's say 10,000. 10,000 divided by 100,000, you're hitting that 1% rule. Yeah, you're hitting the 1% rule and you don't even have to fix anything. You don't have to um, fix the mobile home or anything because the, the, the tenants own it. because they, they fix it themselves. So you don't have to worry about maintenance. Yeah, you can actually get away with a little bit of leniency on the 1% rule with mobile home parks because yeah. your expenses are lower. Yeah. So um, yeah, it's even a little more applicable. Right? Yeah. Yeah, super low maintenance. Um, so your interest rate is seven and a half, very, very short term. That's only going to be like a year or two, right? So, mm -hmm. so you, your payments are around 15,000, just like we, we calculated 15,000. Um, so now let's play around with this. Let's go off of the, the 850. Or actually, let's do 500 first. Right now it's 550, right? 550. So yeah. monthly, monthly revenue, 550. Let's play around with these numbers. So you're getting about um, 6,000 per unit. So you're getting 200,000 a year, right? 200,000 mm -hmm. a year. So 200,000 a year. Um, this should be right here. Total rents, you, get, you should be more, right? Total rents, um, 250, E50. So right now you already cover your mortgage. You're getting 200,000 a year. What type of expenses would you have? Insurance, how much is insurance on a building like this? It's just land. Uh, the tenants actually pay the insurance, uh, oh. the property insurance. Nice, so you don't have so, to pay insurance. And there's some general liability insurance. It's yeah. about $100, $110 a month or so. Okay, so 110 a month, so that's not too bad. Is there management costs or um, you know, self-manage? Uh, we have a manager that we'll probably end up using. Uh, we've self-managed all of our multifamily in Reno, so we're undecided yet, but it'll be 1200 a month if we went with a manager. Yeah. Oh, that's it? 1200 a month? Yep. That's They've okay. acknowledged that it's a, a very easy job. It's basically <laughs> rent collection yeah. and no maintenance. <laughs> right. That's amazing. Okay. So that's, that's pretty good. And then property taxes. Um, how much are property tax in Reno? 1%? Um, the taxes on this will be 4400 for the year. 4,400 so, for the year, 4,400, 4,400. So um, yeah, about 1%, right? About 1%. Um, let's see, of purchase, I guess um, a little, little bit more than of, of purchase. Yeah, so 4,400, so 4,400, 4,400, um, which is not too bad, 4,400 divided by 12, about 400 bucks a month. Um, so let's do that math real quick. 4,400 divided by three, it's about 1.4, um, very similar to California, right? About 1.4-ish, yeah. 1.4-ish property tax. Uh, water, water sewer, you say we have to take care of, right? Uh, water's paid by, actually, yeah, water and sewer are on the landlord. So right. water ends up being about 110 a month. That's it for the and whole then, park? It's uh, actually, it's just the, um, I think some of the common areas, it's uh -huh. pretty cheap. And then the sewer is the, the most expensive, uh, most expensive expense. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's about 2000 a month. Oh, 2000 a month. Okay. So the sewer is expensive, but the water is cheaper. So 2000 a month. All right. Very nice. Times 12. Uh, election and gas. Do you have to pay any common areas, election and gas? On the tenants. Yeah. No common areas. Yeah. Uh, no cleaning supplies or, but um, you can leave, you know, you could probably leave these where they're at and 
yeah cover some uh, some excess yeah small numbers um so right now just based on just just playing around some numbers um with the current situation it's gonna it's, it's not cash flowing because of that sewer bill right that sewer bill takes up a good chunk of the cash flow mm -hmm. um so that's scenario one so let's duplicate this and let's play with scenario two Scenario two is after we increase the rent. This is in the future, two years from now, when you do sell it, um, you're going to get 850, right? 850 a month times 30 yep. units. So you're going to get 10,000 per unit. Wow. So look at this cash flow in two years. You're going to cash flow $5,000 a month after everything, after paying off everything, 5,000 a month. And that's super passive because you have the property manager, uh, low maintenance. And all that. So uh, also your uh, your loan your loan will drop considerably. Yeah. Um after you're able to refinance out. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah, we're we're putting on a high interest rate. So ideally the interest rate should be like five, right? Five for commercial, five and a quarter or so. Depends on where we where we go. It'll actually be um three point seven five right now if we were to quote it. Really? Mm -hmm. for commercial? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. If it was stabilized, that's where it would be at. Um yeah. So we've been getting in all our commercial in Reno. Man, so that's that's even better. So the, the, the cash flow will be even higher, like 7000 a month in the future. So this is just mm -hmm. on a high loan, but in the future, it's going to look really good. Um, so if you look at cash on cash, because you're, you're going to get 70000 a year, um, but you're only putting out seven fifty for the cash. So that's a 10% return cash on cash. So that's pretty amazing. Anything above 10%, is good because that's just on cash flow. That's not even including um, the appreciation. The appreciation is like a bonus, million dollars, just like that, right? Right. Yeah. So very interesting project. Um, so now, how do people get involved? That if they do want to get involved with this one, how how would someone um, jump in and get a piece of this million dollars? <laughs> Um, so all of our projects, we've done all sorts of different deals. We've done syndications in the more traditional sense. We've done yeah. partnerships or like what's called, you know, like joint ventures or JVs. Uh -huh. um, this particular one, we're raising funds. So I think you said it's 750000 as the down payment. We're raising 760000 in total. Mm -hmm. um, we, and uh, that's in $100,000 $100, minimums. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're right now about $500,000 has been raised. We have about 260 left and it's kind of on a, um, uh, what's called a preferred equity structure. Yeah. So what that means is we are basically giving, uh, giving investors their money back and then 20% return on their money, wow. um, annualized. And then we're taking the upside on top of that. And so we used to do everything in Reno on a profit split based model mm -hmm. where we would give, um, you know, get their investors their money back, and then we would split the profits down the middle. Yeah. Um, and what ended up happening is we ended up giving away um, you know, a huge chunk every single time. <laughs> so investors were getting, um, you know, putting in money and then getting 100% on our first project, like IRR or return, internal rate of return, 150 on the next one, 200 on the next two. Wow. And um, so we've changed the structure to increase the, you know, the the likelihood that you're that we're able to hit a 20% return for them. Yeah. Um, but also cap the upside so that you know we're taking the upside on top of that. So it's a more stable or more predictable, um, but uh kind of uh more consistent with the uh what the market nice. or what the other options are out there in the market. Okay. So 20% return, 20% return, which is pretty good because I don't think you can find any investment secured by real estate, right? Um out there. Uh, twenty percent, twenty percent. Um, so no bonus at all, appreciation, not even like ten percent bonus appreciation. But you mean uh, you're talking about the upside? For the upside, yeah. <laughs> for the <investment. laughs> uh, no, for this one, we're just doing twenty percent. Um, there's a minimum, or yeah. so that's twenty percent per year. Um, yeah. and then there's a minimum of twenty percent in case we sell early. There yeah. can always be an offer that comes in three months <laughs> in that's really high or something. So um, we still give a twenty percent return to investors in that case. Yeah, nice. So twenty percent return in one year. Um, when do you pay that, or how do you how do you pay that? Yeah, it could be in two different forms. One is um, in quarterly distributions. Yeah. Um, the other is that it will accrue and then be paid out at the end. Mm -hmm. So, 
I'll give you two scenarios. If a hundred thousand were invested and um, at year one rolls around and we pay out 20,000. Yeah. Um, then year two rolls around, we pay out another 20,000. That would be like scenario one. Um, or if we're not able to pay out 20,000 on the first year, because there's not enough cash flow, for example, yeah. um, then it will accrue and compound. And so then at year two, we would pay out a hundred or we'd pay out, you know, your original investment plus 44,000. Yeah. So um, it okay, would. Okay, you can just take my money, Ryan. I'm just thinking. <laughs> <laughs> All right. right, that is a good return. That's a good return. Everyone, give me your credit card so I can give to Ryan, and I'll give you fifteen percent interest <laughs> so I get the difference. I right, gotcha. <laughs> um, the only the only other caveat is um we're raising this so with all syndications you have to file SEC um paperwork and, and whatnot and so huh. you have two choices it can be 506b or 506c yeah um it's not you know this one is a 506c project which means that investors will have to be accredited so there's a um and usually two ways to be accredited it's either a, a million dollars net worth mm -hmm. um or an income for the last two years of two hundred thousand dollars um and that can be joint between you and a spouse or just solo hmm. Nice. Okay. So that's basically everyone in the Bay Area. Yes. You, it's a lot of, <laughs> lot of Bay Area people can, can hit those. Wow. Okay. Marty, you're qualified because you make $2 million a year. <laughs> yeah, because I work for you. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that's right. Man. By this... the way, Tom pays good. <laughs> <laughs> this is cool. This is good return. It's a very good return, and it's paid out every year. It's secured by the property, right? Secured by the property. Um, so it's pretty much 100% finance. Uh, are you guys putting in any of your own money? Uh, we have a, um, we're selling all our multifamily right now in Reno. Uh, okay. And um, that sale is supposed to go through in about two weeks, about 14 days. Yeah. So if it does, we'll be putting in our own, we'll be putting in some of our own money. Nice. Um, but if that gets delayed, then we will end up raising the full amount. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, okay. So. Uh, very nice. So 100% finance. And then you have some apartment selling. So I'm curious, how much are you going to net on your apartment? Um, our, our group in us plus the investors will net about $2 million, $2 million um, in profit. Uh, it, for um, it's about wow. half, half on their side, half for us, roughly. Yeah. Wow. wow, that's amazing. So you just made a million dollars just like that. <laughs> just yeah i don't know about just yeah, like that but yeah <laughs> that's so easy right it's so easy making million dollars man all right i'm, I'm just gonna, gonna laugh for that comment <laughs> <laughs> like all that. right everyone i'm quitting Flippy. i'm gonna work for ryan can i apply for a job ryan tomorrow i quit <laughs> i, I cannot want any... you cannot tom i don't you want cannot. to smell <laughs> ugly houses anymore i'm tired of stinky haunted houses <laughs> my back hurts and i smell all the time but it's okay um yeah that's so cool congratulations ryan i love that so you, you guys are making uh big moves um keep it up and if any, anyone wants to reach out to ryan would you want to share your number or uh yeah yeah happy to share my phone number um right. what's your number 408 408 529 529 0271 zero two seven one all right so that's ryan's number so just disclosure i'm not involved with this deal we're just uh, sharing ryan's deal but feel free to reach out that's between you two whatever you guys work out you could get me a nice present for christmas but other than that um contact ryan for more information and it's exactly 11 so it's perfect um anything else you want to add ryan before we wrap up yeah yeah um one thing I. Uh, if you're interested in just commercial real estate in general um, or syndication or anything that I talked about, um, yeah. just from a knowledge perspective, like education and knowledge, um, you can call or email me anytime. I take a lot of calls and we actually have a lot of people that come visit us. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was in Reno for over a year and then now I'm in Los Angeles. So a lot of people come and visit us and just stay for a few days to just kind of absorb knowledge. So I'm going to be stepping out of real estate um, in the next few months or at least away from it heavily. So, um, I want to unload as much knowledge and information as I can, um, to anyone who's actually, you know, really hungry to learn it and then go apply it elsewhere. 
Nice. So hey. give me a call about anything. It doesn't have to be about this. Yeah, it doesn't have to be about this deal. Just um, if you're interested in learning more about commercial real estate. Yeah. Um, I had a quick question. Do you do like a um, like a week, like Zoom meeting, like Tom, or do you do anything like this or like a clubhouse or anything? Uh, I don't. We have a we have a meetup that, as Tom mentioned earlier, it's where we met. About once a month, we host it in the Bay Area. Um, I will send it to Tom next time when we host one. There might be one in December, um, but I don't have one on the calendar at the moment. So, um, yeah, there it is. Yeah, you can uh, join, join Ryan's uh, meetup group. A uh, really good group to talk about commercial and all that. Uh, next one is in... We don't have a next one uh, <laughs> on there right now, but we'll probably, we've been doing it about every month. We'll probably have one in December. Nice. And um, we'd love to see you there. We usually, yeah, host in somewhere in the South Bay area. Yeah, okay. Yeah, let's, let's uh, have another event soon so we can celebrate. You're probably closed by then too, right? You're probably closed the mobile home in December. So we'll celebrate yeah. by then. Yeah, we're going to be at your office, Tom. <laughs> All right, let's do it. Oh, let's take a selfie before we go so we can uh, have some memories together. Okay, everyone ready for our super Saturday selfie? And then we'll wrap up. Can we see your beautiful faces, everyone? All the shy people, can we see your beautiful faces? Okay, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1, wave. <laughs> one. Okay, bye, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Ryan. That was really inspiring, man. I got to learn how to make a million like you. I have a million in depth. I'm good at that. <laughs> <laughs> right. Hey. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna put my music back and then you guys can enjoy Tom, Tom, Tom. Oh, yeah. Before I before I let you go, I'm gonna huh? show you guys the um I'm gonna show you guys the the wall. It's painted now. Oh so Marty. they have a visual. Yeah, yeah. Let me make you host so you can share a screen. Okay. Or or, or yeah, let's let's check out Margie's cool wall. Okay, where where am I? Okay, so I now you're host. I. Now your host, you can you can share a screen. How do I share? Oh, right here, right here. I got it. Yeah. Cause I'm in a phone right now. All right, um, let's share my screen. Mar Margie's designer okay. wall, real quick, real quick. Start broadcast. Is that what it is? Wait, hold on a second. Oh wait, I have to stop share. No wait, stop. <laughs> now you can share. Okay. Yes. Okay. What is going on? Um, you are sharing screen. No. Um, and I have to send, <laughs> I don't know what to do. I'm like, I'm <laughs> like, okay, flip. wait, right here. I'm flipping yeah. the thing. Uh, yeah, I was sharing is... my screen. Okay. Oh, Here's the wall. Right here. That's amazing. I know. So it's $82. Wow. Right? It's cost. It's custom because we based it on the wall size. Yeah. This is about 22, um, 22 feet ceiling. Yeah. Yeah. So just kind of, but the house is read the it's a condo, so it's yeah. really small. But something like this would elevate you guys to it. Okay, it's very simple to do. Wow. Um, just be careful with the contractor. Hold the ladder, <laughs> like don't let them fall. Okay. Yeah. Amazing! <laughs> I love it. I Hi love guys. it. Great job. All right. Thank you, everyone. Have a great Saturday. Thank you. We'll, we'll see you next week. Thank you, everyone. All right. Bye bye. Thanks, Tom.